are watching Fairfield 2.0, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, dogs and cats, whoever's watching. Um, hopefully somebody's watching. What we have today <laughs> is another exciting adventure where we're talking with all sorts of, um, uh, well, entrepreneurs in this, in this uh, case. And um, let's just go down the line here and introduce everybody. Uh, I'm Mike Ragonia, by the way, in case anybody needed to know that. Um, um, that ends down there. We have Jonas Magrum. Jonas Magrum of Jonas Magrum Music and also of Prasad Gifts. Um, uh, we'll be talking about all sorts of things with him. Uh, talk about entrepreneur. Uh, we also have, and a new entrepreneur, uh, Corey Morrill. Um, we've got a new place that's opening in town um, uh, that you may want to check out, which is Earth and Water, excuse me, I have to read this, this is like a long time. Earth and Water <laughs> Tea Lounge and Pottery Shop. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, we're going to get into some details about that in a bit. And we have Lisa Ben here. Lisa Ben and I uh, go way back. Uh, we we yes. won't talk about that, but we will <laughs> talk about her, uh, her nutrition mission. Um, it's quite a mission. And uh, we will uh, we'll hear so much about that in, in just a bit. Um, okay, jump ball. Who wants to go first? So we, let's like roll a dice. Roll a dice. <laughs> Corey, you spoke first. You get <laughs> you get the interrogation first. Oh, I'm ready. Um, Corey, can you tell us about your new venue? Can you tell us about first of all what the what the store is going to be featuring, um, and mm -hmm. and then maybe you know how it how it came to be. What what inspired you to to uh, get into the tea business? Well, the idea. I mean, what it is? It's a tea lounge and pottery shop. So I'm uh, serving. Uh, all kinds of organic and fair trade teas, single estate teas in particular, um, some really excellent unblended things. There's a great diversity, and also I'm, I'm really proud of all of them. So we're serving the teas, we're selling the teas in bulk, um, selling baked goods, <clears throat> excuse me, and we're serving it all in handmade pottery or on handmade pottery from local artists, um, nice. something that I am really fond of her. It means a lot to me. Like when I go out to a place, it's kind of, uh, I've been to a couple places in Iowa City or something like that where you see that and it, it makes it feel kind of like the owners are very present and like somebody is really putting a lot of attention into something. Yeah, like there's a lot of life in the shop because right. not only with the teas, but also with this pottery, with these things that people, these creations people are making and you're drinking it out of that. Plus also people will be able to buy uh, some of these items, right? Yeah, and the and the pottery will also be for sale. So it's kind of a mixture between, um, I I'm trying to go for like fine dining quality level of service for the teas, uh, putting that much attention and care into it with, um, a pottery gallery or ceramic gallery. It'll be mostly functional stuff that you can use in your own home, but a little bit of just ceramic art. And um, yeah. then there's like the retail component too, where you can buy the teas and take it home. So. Wow. What about renting? Can somebody rent some pottery from you? You know, sort of like you have some guests from out of town, you want to impress them, but you don't want to. Uh, okay. You don't, you don't want to go all the way in, into the investment. <laughs> you don't really want to commit. You just want to. What, what about who are the artists that you're featuring? Who are the uh, pottery artists? Uh, right now, all the all the work that we're using in shop is made by Mark Wilkins of Winter Moon Pottery. Nice. Um, he's been great to work with, as well as Chris Scamahorn. He's also a uh, new artist that just moved to town, mm -hmm. and he has some really fascinating techniques. He's He's also, um, he feels really strongly about using local clay. So he actually digs up clay here in wow. Fairfield yep. and yeah. mixes that into that his great. clay body and uh, makes words like that. Chris was actually a guest here and he explained it. Oh, he had all sorts of uh, pottery nice. devices, including um, including musical instruments made out of wow. pottery, which I thought was, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, I've got to hear this. How, how did they sound? <laughs> they sounded... Uh, they sounded very well, as you can imagine. It was earthy. an organic, earthy <laughs> sound, but it was um, it was surprisingly there was pitch and there was yes. uh, there was a ring out uh, mm -hmm. more than I would have expected out of pottery per se. You know, because mm. you, you know you think pottery and you you, you picture like a thud like a dull thud. You're picturing right. right you may yeah. think of something, or or you have to be gentle. You have to be so careful not right. to break the thing. Mm. But he was being pretty aggressive on uh, at least one of the pieces. I I, mm. I meant I saw um, Lisa. <laughs> Lisa, yes. let's move on to uh, Lisa Ben, um, <laughs> Nutrition Mission. Tell us about this mission. Well, shall I look at you? <laughs> yeah, Jonas. Um, this is fairly new for me. The uh, Nutrition Mission is the name of my new um, internet company that I'm starting. And um, 
It's all about taking high phytochemical nutrition and um, cleaving out the uh, God's medicine that resides in a lot of the skins, peels, um, seeds of the organic produce that people throw away. Right. Now, you, you had yeah. mentioned, I'm going to stop you there mm -hmm. because I know we, when we had a conversation earlier, you were talking about avocado pits, for instance. For instance, yeah, I wish I had brought a beautiful big, <laughs> you know, people Picture think Picture of an avocado. Right. <laughs> I know. You know, it's this huge mega seed. Right. You know, I mean, yeah, you can make a whole other avocado tree out of that seed or you can throw it in your compost or your garbage, as most people do. Right. But guess what? In that seed, blended in a powerful three horsepower blender, or two, three is better, yeah. you can um, micronize it so it turns into amazing uh, soluble fiber for guess what? Take a guess. Uh, for your pets? Yeah, any, <laughs> okay. yeah for the heart. Pets for have heart. hearts, people have hearts, for everybody heart. has a heart, right? So you can put it in a smoothie, mm. it's basically tasteless, kind of like a tofu thing. Um, and then you add whatever you want to flavor it in your smoothie um, as an example. Well, can I yeah, ask you something? A lot sure. of these things, a lot of these things, a lot of, med uh, not medicinal, but a lot of uses for food have come out of traditions. Right. Uh, you know, whether it be, you know, Chinese herbs or, or mm -hmm. and, and, you know, things like that. Right. What can you, an avocado pit is mm -hmm. going to be one of the hardest things in the world for ancient civilizations, I'm imagining, to have casually ground up or whatever for the hearts. So and right. we need a three power, <laughs> we need a three power, right. three horsepower uh, blender. How did, now this is a common theme also, mm -hmm. because remember apricot pits for a while were supposed to have uh, mm -hmm. been good for um, cancer, cancer and all that. So how do people, how have people traditionally been able to utilize these things? They didn't have blenders. How did they use it in the past? Good question. Um, I really don't know if in the past people ate or blended avocado pits. <laughs> I do know, though, in certain cultures, people that live really long lives, like into 120, even 30, um, they were actually, um, the person that I learned a lot of this from, Jeff Primack, um, he actually interviewed a lot of these people you know, people that have lived for all these years, and he asks, what is your secret? What One hour to eat an apple. Because what they do, maybe their teeth aren't that great, <laughs> but, but they, that. they spend all this time thoroughly chewing the apple, and guess what? They don't throw the pits or the core away. Mm -hmm. they, they micronize those. So the blender is kind of like the state-of-the-art technology for... Um, chewing, you know, masticating and cleaving out all these vital nutrients that people throw away. Wow. And so your cells are able to absorb the nutrients, you know, without having to chew for hours because we're all I, busy. We can't spend an hour chewing anymore. I think in the ancient times they used to take the avocado pit and just put it between the gum and the teeth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like a, like a squirrel yeah, with a big knock. Just, you imagine? And they would have two. They would have two. Yeah, so over time, it became a fashion. It so right. right. <laughs> but like... like <laughs> and then, then, then they get bored and they take it out and use them as yeah, earrings. Yeah, so. yeah. Right. And... <laughs> And then, no. and then also, no, they did not. like for another example, <laughs> you know, could. organic cucumbers, you know, that's the number one source of silica for skin, nails, no, hair. About, okay. And so the, mm. the skin of the cucumber is where all that really powerful nutrition mm. lies, is what? in the skin. It's so, the skin. you know, to put it in a smoothie, my mother, sorry, my mother thinks I'm Italian, but I'm not because I'm always talking <laughs> with my okay. hands. It's because I'm also a massage therapist. So, ah, um, But anyway, so, you know, you get the point. Italian. Micronizing a lot of the, the skin's um, peels, stems of things that people usually throw away. Mm. What about what you about know. well what about what are some other interesting things like what comes to mind is like are a couple that aren't really mm -hmm. edible at right. least we think they're not edible things like uh, in big in big doses maybe things like orange peel orange skins orange peel skins well um, actually what I have come to learn is that the inner pith of the grapefruit not the outer part but the inner the pith white. The, the white, white yeah. right it's called pith that's pith. where all the uh, can't anti cancer prevention lies. So when I make my smoothies, for example, I include a lot of that. And just the same as you, the peel of the, um, 
the lime, you peel away with a knife. It takes a little time, just that mm -hmm. outer green, mm -hmm. and, and I throw in the inner part of the white part, because that yeah. is, has amazing um, and the, and phytochemicals, the, and it's right. great for your skin. The and the lime. same, and the same for I imagine, and the same for oranges Orange. with the insects. Specifically, the grapefruit, though, for the for the cancer prevention. Huh, but I'm okay. sure the orange, you know, the collagen and all the vitamin C. Mm. But by the way, some, uh, goji berries. Have you heard of goji berries? Yes. Number one superfood. Yes. Although it, it's up for debate. Well, the, the, that superfood, whenever I eat that, it, 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 it's a very short visit. <laughs> we'll just say that. Um, <laughs> uh, I, but I do, I do like the taste, and I do feel a little more energized at the end of that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but I, uh, I, I am surprised at some of these things that you're, you're, you're suggesting, that the pits, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, what about pi the outer skin? What, what's happening with the pineapple? Anything All from right. the outer skin? This oh. is a pineapple. Okay. You, you rip the leaves off the top. Right. And you cut off the stem without the leaves that from the top up, that is like powerful anti-cancer prevention. Not the sweet part of the, 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 uh, pineapple, the, the pineapple, but the, the top of it that holds those leaves. Uh -huh. I mean, it's amazing. You could just rip off the leaves and save and blend up that stem mm -hmm. that holds the leaves. That is power, because people that are fighting cancer typically don't do well on fruit sugar. Right. So that is an example. But back to the gojis, and then I'll just okay. let you continue. Um, goji berries, you know, they're typically fairly dried, you know, and they're bright red. You can soak them in water overnight, and in the morning blend them. Guess what color they turn? Purple. <laughs> can you take a guess? Red. Close? Uh, what's close to <laughs> Orange? Yes, like a fluorescent oh yellow-orange, because it's number one source of beta-carotene, vitamin A. Oh my gosh, okay. Yeah, so well, we've always kind of known that there's, there's stuff, for instance, carrots. They say, really, don't peel away the carrot skin, mm -hmm. although there's sort of this hygienic thing that makes right. us, we look at the carrot and we go, I'm not eating that, and then we right. peel away the, right. the skin a lot of times. Mm -hmm. I, I really haven't done that over the years, but, and mm -hmm. sweet potatoes and potatoes, Eating the skins on that isn't such a far-fetched thing, and people are, I think are used to certain things. But these mm -hmm. other, how do you get people? How do you get the masses to understand that they should be doing this? Uh, do they come to nutritionmission.com, perhaps? Well, I'm actually going to be um, giving classes, demoing with my three horsepower blender, letting people taste incredible smoothies, nice. learning what ingredients mm. to make in certain reverse uh, illness reversing, okay. and, and then just general well-being. You so, know, a de daily preventative smoothie. Okay. You know, that might include nice. beets, corn, you know, cucumber, goji berries, whatever. But nice. they actually can taste really good if they're done, you know, with a little bit of knowledge how to how to blend it the right way. And the avocado pit. Can't nice. forget that. Nice. Are, yeah. Can you, can you also do an omelet? Are you good with omelets? I'm excellent. I was All just right. reading about frittatas this morning online. <laughs> there yeah. we go. Yeah. So before the end of the show, can we have you make an omelet for us? And... Sure. Do right. you have the, the omelet pan? No. How about a frittata? No. With goji we berries? We, I would love it, yeah. And asparagus. Can we call out for this? Yeah, why don't we? I think you know of a place, don't you? I mean, because you're in the food business now. <laughs> I do. Let's go to Jody's. I have an yeah. avocado pit at home if we oh. want. <laughs> Next time we'll bring in Jonas's avocado pit and I'll have my blender and beautiful. these guys can try. You would be but it would be great to have you back. That would be fun. Thank if you. you really, if you want to do an, uh, an, an exhibition, a demo, that would be great. I yeah, would yeah. love to. <laughs> that would be fun. That's nice. All right, uh, Jonas. Um, you are entrepreneur. We mentioned these are everybody's an entrepreneur here, but you in particular, you have the Prasad uh, incense, etc. Can you go into what got you into? We all know about your music. We're going to get to that in a second. But what got you into um, into uh, you know like incense and other gifts uh, that are oriented to that? Uh, about almost thirty years ago, my wife Sandy uh, purchased this little company that was uh, doing business in about six stores nationwide mm -hmm. and uh, I needed something to do uh, to be productive and other uh, than making great music well thank you okay. and, and a Joe Tishy said work with your wife Joe Tishy being an astrologer yeah okay yeah. Eastern, yeah. Eastern, astrologer. Eastern astrologer he said work with your wife so I started working on that business and um, that's how it came to be nice uh, what drew you to this? Was everything in place already? Was or, Were all of the um, scents in place by that point? So you're on... We've added some over the years. but And now, of course, we have a number of, well, probably 30 lines of different products. Wow. Can you talk about some of them? Sure. Um, 
Prasad Incense is our flagship brand that we private. It's our private label. Yeah. Uh, but we sell Sai Baba Nag Champa, which is a probably the most popular single fragrance in the world. Um, the yeah, Champa. And you walk into stores and if you think you'd be hitting like a, a wall of uh, sandalwood, yeah. but it's Champa. Yeah. yeah it, it's amazing mm -hmm. how much of that is imported into this country. They're probably. I, I'm just guessing that there are 250 companies that import that, wow. at least in this country. Mm. And then we have another line called Shanti Malai, which is um, uh, it's made by a women's cooperative in India. It's not our line, but oh, we, wow. do, uh, we do distribute that. And by the way, we distribute to stores. That's our, you know, we're a distributor. Okay. Um, but although you do have certain products that are yours. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And you know we now we have these ha women's handbags from Nepal, and we've yes. tried some different things over the years. We have a lot of different incense lines. Right. Um, what else? Are you, who else? You know, who else are you carrying? Or are uh, you distributing? Uh, well, you know, I don't know if you know Quentin Wood, uh, but Quentin uh, does a lot of business in Nepal. So we have a whole line of uh, Nepalese incense, of Tibetan incense. Nice. Uh, it's pure herbal incense. A lot of people like that. Mm -hmm. It's not perfumey. It's not perfumed at all, and it's supposed to have medicinal uh, uh, characteristics. So you might even be interested in Definitely. incorporating yeah. that. Yes. Definitely, I'll check it out. And for uh, that demo that we're going to do, when you bring in the blend, the avocado incense, 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 blend up the incense. We blends the incense. No, we can't. We're not recommending that to customers. Okay. Uh, <laughs> our, our liability uh, policy probably doesn't <laughs> cover that. Oh, yeah. But anyway, um, <laughs> or burning an avocado pit. And then we have a, we have another line called Angel Flora, and and then this uh, line that has kind of a spiritual theme. It's has both Spanish and English on it, and it has names like uh, uh, Go Away Evil and uh, Money Draw. And <laughs> oh, money Draw, eh? Yeah, 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 money yeah. Draw. Right. And it, we can <laughs> sell it to you. Um, yeah, yeah. We, That's yeah. a place. But anyway, it's, I, I, I hope it draws money to our company, <laughs> selling nice. it, uh, selling enough of it. But, uh, Burning that round the clock, are we? Yeah, yeah. I mean, then we have a lot of different burners, you know, soapstone lines, a carved soapstone uh, made in India, in Agra, actually, where, where the Taj Mahal is. And, um, what about pottery? We burners. have, we, we, oh, you know, the, you know just like maybe the incense holders. Just the, and, oh. We have, we, we don't have any actual pottery burners. We have some, this whole line of fantasy burners. There's a lot of stuff. It's too much to describe here, but if people like to see it, they can either, they can go online and check out. It's, it's on. What's the, what's the website? Thank you for asking, Corey. <laughs> I'll, I'll pay you your commission. <laughs> www.prasad, P-R-A-S-A-D, gifts.com. And thank you for asking. www.prasadgifts.com. All right. And then also, um, we got to get everybody's websites going at this point, <laughs> out of politeness. Corey, what's your website? It's earthwatertea.com. That's all three words just spelled out. Earthwater tea. Nice. Lisa? It's nutritionmission.com, and the new is the N-E-W. Cool. New nutrition. New nutrition. By the way, Corey, I was in a, a wonderful tea house in Boulder last weekend, and I'd love to tell you about my experience if you haven't been there. Oh, yeah, Why absolutely. don't you tell? Go ahead. I'm telling you We've about got a little time. Let's talk about your tea house. It's, it's I can't experience. remember. It okay. was on, I believe it was on Pearl. I think they may have something called the Boulder Tea House there. Yeah, I'm not this, sure. this was yeah on the Walking Mall on the Pearl yeah, Street I, Mall, I know. Yeah. And, uh, which couldn't hold a candle to your store, no, by the way. But, but anyway, not continue. Because we'll Pearl Street doesn't hold a candle to downtown Philadelphia. No, actually. Uh, so you know that, that's way <laughs> commercial. This is all real, honest uh, hometown <laughs> love affair with product. I'm Pearl, sure Pearl Street's kind of fun though. I, I used I, to live in I Boulder. Admit so. that, I admit that. But I was just trying to talk up the t-shirt. No, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, it was they had the front area they, they had for bulk. You know, it was kind of a, a long, a long like like many of our restaurants here on the square, a long building. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, the front they sold um, their bulk teas, and they also sold a lot of tea paraphernalia. You know, a lot of these little iron tea. Pots that they oh, threw. I love those. I don't know if the they're the teapots. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, and then the back section they have partially uh, separated by some screens, and then there are 
four or five tables, some of which are on the floor, which I couldn't use because of my knee, oh. but they had one table that with benches that we sat and enjoyed yeah. it. And then they, they, served, they actually had a wait staff that would come to the back area and take your order, and uh, it was it was sweet and elegant and Relaxing. Felt classy. It sounds really yes, relaxing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, especially if you avoid the caffeinated teas. It's extra, <laughs> extra, <laughs> extra. But anyway, I'm sure yours will be even nicer, but you're the one who talks. Well, that sounds great. Yeah. Sounds Cor great. Corey, what's your what's the uh, uh, what's the percentage of herbal tea to like you know regular I guess what caffeinated and non caffeinated teas? Well, um, I'm carrying 54 different teas or um, herbal blends all together, and about a dozen of those are caffeine free. Wow. So there's plenty of options there for people, and among the ones with caffeine, those are. You know, for people concerned with their caffeine intake or whatever, it's um, there are many teas with lower caffeine than even decaf coffee. So yeah, actually, my wife is more concerned about my caffeine intake. Oh, okay. <laughs> Isn't that a funny thing how women are? <laughs> well, well, women aren't that way sometimes. Right? Um, well, right now I'm thoroughly decaffeinated. I have oh. to say, I'm going to have to go to one. Of your <laughs> right now, for the moment, Doesn't I it feel good. No. no. <laughs> That's honest. Yes, it does. But yes, it does. It's more. It, there's a more evenness. Um, but I kind of prefer. I, I kind of enjoy my freneticness a lot more. But <laughs> this is one of the more mellow shows. Uh, but, but I just wanted to. You want uh, us to cut up more? Uh, please, would you okay. just take I over? To, are, just... are you going to carry the purse? The, the purse. Perth? You know that Perth. special kind of tea that has. Have you heard of it? Perth. P U E R D H. Oh, you know what? I think you're talking about maybe. Puer is one that's uh, it. pronunciation yeah, of it. I'm saying it wrong. That, yes. that's a, it's P-U-E-R-H. It's, yeah. it's an H-T, actually. It's mm -hmm. really fascinating how uh, how uh, detailed and how much of an art form tea manufacturer can be. It's really quite like wine. Mm -hmm. um, the degree to which people put their energy and attention into it and seek out really the best possible flavor. Mm. So I will be carrying uh, three different types of puer. Those are HTs, and among mm. those there's um, there's green puers, which mm. are just uh, like a green tea is like a, a quickly steamed, uh, lightly oxidized as opposed to a black tea, which is highly oxidized, higher caffeine, mm. uh, darker, fuller, more brisk or heavy flavor. Um, there's green puers and then there's black puers, which just indicates what type of tea they were before they started to undergo the mm. aging process. Maybe we could have some kind of tea tasting parties. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. That's actually a great I, idea. I will be. I'm you definitely. You can teach. You know, you could teach everyone about this. Is yeah, beautiful yes. knowledge. Latte lattes. Would yeah, that sure. Be great? Yeah, That's what's we're missing. doing that too. Latte lattes. You still get some of the caffeine. Mike can yeah. introduce. You could come in and so. bring up the energy. You know, <laughs> I'd have to recaffeinate. Well, um, it might be fun to take the camera around the store and. And check it out once it's like well, 100. You know. I, yeah, absolutely. We could do a fun thing like that. Absolutely. If yeah. you do a taste, if you do an educational or taste, um, uh, you know, a show with tea, tea tasting, sure, we're in there. Okay. I am Fairfield 2.0 on the on the prowl to your business in town, <laughs> Fairfield. Um, that would be great. Searching yeah, for yeah, free things. For, well, yeah. Well, well, you know, we throw that in there. Yeah. There is a little bit of a <laughs> <laughs> motive here. Uh, Corey, the other thing I wanted to ask you was, um, leave my table alone, thank you. Um, the only thing I wanted to ask you further to that was, um, you can play with the table if you'd like. I thought you were serious. I'm going to play with it. Um, <laughs> with, the puer, with the puers, they're aged, but this is going to be a, a question from ignorance, total ignorance about okay, teas and caffeine go. and all that. Sure. Does it increase, it must increase flavor, but does it increase things like caffeine? What did I just say? I just said something stupid, didn't no, I? Uh, <laughs> no. Okay. no, it actually... Um, it's at least it's I can say, as, as far as I know, it doesn't actually increase the caffeine content or anything like that. Um, as far as I know, a, a black tea, a fresh black tea, like a Darjeeling or something, would still have a higher caffeine content than an aged green tea. But um, mm -hmm. I'm still learning too, so it's possible that I may be corrected eventually. That some, <laughs> but it does it does change the flavor significantly. I was going to ask you, right, right, the, the aging process, just like a wine, just like as you're talking, just like, uh, uh, I guess, um, certain meats, when you age them, they also, uh, mm -hmm. I suppose they become more flavorful. What happens with, um, <clears throat> what happens with 
this captain who's like my caffeine still. Somebody comes in there. <laughs> somebody comes in there from another who, who's a big coffee drinker. They're coming in there for the first time. And they want to. They're thinking, okay, let's try out a tea that's gonna mm. give me that caffeine jolt that <laughs> my americana gives me. What are they? Um, what are they? Yeah, there's a few. There's a few options. Um, you know, some even coffee drinkers I find have like a, a wide, um, or w- I would say among coffee drinkers, there's a great amount of variation in people's palate. Some people who are really into getting their coffee every day or twice a day still really can appreciate like uh, the delicate, sweet, and kind of vegetal flavor of uh, uh, a spring harvest green tea or something mm. like that. Just because it's so nice. different, it's it's very light and uplifting and refreshing, and it's really delicious. But nice. for those people that want something closer to that spectrum of um, um, richness and intensity, there are some really uh, bold black teas. I have an, an Assam gold tipped Assam tea, which is excellent. Or um, I'm really a fan of the uh, Chinese teas. They're very different. <coughs> so here's the uh, this is great. What do you call it? This. What is it? Some really million dollar question. What is it? <laughs> right. What is it? The million. Here's the million dollar question. The million dollar question. Hundred million dollar question. Let's just make I, it. I'm worth picturing a really a lovely environment. You know, sure. It's high quality everything. Mm-hmm. Are you going? To, I'm sure you've thought about this. What have you decided about whether or not to put internet access in? Oh, okay. Mm, this is an oh, question. yeah. That is a, that's a really good question. Because I can I see the Corey. Corey, I, we, this is, it shouldn't even be a question. Yes, there will be internet. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sincere because I can see, you know, I can oh, see. Are we this. bullying you? I'm sorry. No, 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 no. this is a sincere this, question. This yeah. is a really, really good question, actually. Um, it's, it's a really good question. Um, and you're, you're bringing up doubts that I've had because that's how good a question it is. Uh, I... I really appreciate um, going somewhere and it being, well, it facilitating something by having no internet access. If you go into a nice place where it's kind of, it's kind of to the point where nobody's telling you anything, but you're maybe expecting that you shouldn't be like having a loud phone call or something, or you shouldn't be like uh, sharing a YouTube video with your friend because other people are there maybe trying to enjoy a conversation or something or, or something more quiet or but, um, silence. yeah the um, the aesthetics of the of the atmosphere or, you know, the, that. or the experience of, yeah you know are you going to actually the actual experience tea? of the tea yeah. now but, i have to i have to tell you though however despite that everybody will be everyone will be on their cell phones every i mean like texting <laughs> they'll be texting <laughs> no, no, no. the younger the crowd the more text is going to be in there and uh, i just it, it, did no, you consider and, and having here, a separate so, room that so, did that? So here's... Yeah, here's, <laughs> outside. Here's yeah, that room is called outside. <laughs> With the umbrellas. As in, right. get outside. Right. Right. That's right. Here's, here's the answer to what I'm currently thinking about that. So, idealistically, you know, it, it, it would be kind of nice to have separate spaces or something like that. But um, for the moment, I am going to have... So many people have expressed interest in being able to have wireless internet there. I am going to have that... Um, I'm still, I will say, I'm taking a number of uh, very deliberate measures to make it something special for people and something that's more um, intimate, more quiet, and uh, meaningful. And it's not, instead of prohibiting people's behavior and saying you can't use it, a wireless device or something like that and trying to control yeah. the exact nature of uh, people's behavior, I'd rather just kind of do what I can from my side to facilitate something it is a little bit more quieting because it's not like um it's not like a regular cafe or something in in my mind at least that's what i'm trying to create is something that uh you have an option to to me there's still even though i've been doing this for a while and tasted all these teas so many times there's still kind of an element of uh of uh, magic or adventure to it or something that like it the, you know, people put a lot of work into these things, and you have, yeah. it's, it's an amazing way to get s- some uh, really palpable luxury in your life for a very small amount of money, and oh. you're able to kind of have an experience at a nice place like that. So it's almost a little sacred. Yeah. There's a uh, sacred yeah. element. Yeah. Yeah, we, like the matcha sure. tea that they use in the mm-hmm. ceremonies. Mm-hmm. That oh, use see. The whole leaf. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's yeah. your angle. You realize if you wanted to not have internet in certain areas, you, you could say we do not want to upset the bo- the vibe of the teas, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or or you know. Uh, and by the way, the place in Boulder did 
you did have the option of them doing the ceremony. At the yeah, table. absolutely. Right. And and uh, here's just mm -hmm. one alternative one, it, which doesn't exactly fit with your the principle you just outlined, but uh, maybe have just certain a, cu a couple hours. You know, this is mm. this is silent or this is no no uh, what do you call it? No gadget time. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, yeah, I, uh, good luck with that one. Yeah. But the, <laughs> it's an interesting. But you're right on, right? Yes. See yes. how I mean, you're both representing like completely opposite sides <laughs> of the spectrum right here. In in that some people want a place where it can really be kind of like old world and kind of like quiet and in uh, a real nice place to have a conversation with one other person or something. And other people are like, hey, I you know I I got stuff to do like. Or if they go by Sure, themselves. I want to drink some tea, but I want to yeah. be able to check my email. Exactly. Well, could, could you maybe have the um, the people that are, are that the Wi-Fi um, part could be maybe in the center or closer to the door, maybe? Yeah, like that. Or out the know, door, right? Exactly. And have the quieter oh, part. oh, that's a good question. But we I'm sure you'll figure it out. can experiment with those. Yeah. Are you going to have, yeah. like uh, like Cafe P, are you going to have like tables outside or anything where people can also experience an outdoors? Yep, a couple uh, tables nice. outside. Yep. Uh, okay, what about... Um, uh, just real quick before we leave tea, uh, Lisa, <laughs> when I leave tea, da, um, I, Lisa, what is the what when you listen when you look at teas? Mm -hmm. Do any of the healing? Are you familiar with teas in your um, world too? The coffee is my my vice, and I'm always quitting, but then going back to once a day. But um, <laughs> I really I'm believe I really believe in the uh, urban mates, the um, the high phytochemical teas, um, green mm. tea, the matcha that has you know the the whole leaf of the green. It's very... matcha. Is, matcha is like a, a powdered green yeah. tea, and you actually end up ingesting the leaf, like she's saying, yeah. instead of drinking an infusion mm. of the of the water that has right. had they, the leaf soaking in right. it. Right, and they say it actually oh. can. Um, it sort of encourages the alpha wave, the alpha state. Right. So, you know, it's good to be caffeinated and have fun with that, but it's, you know, it's also nice to know that there's kind of medicinal teas that can give right. you kind of a relaxed calmness, great antioxidants. Um, actually, it's my, my uh, mission to, to delve into the tea world, so um, to get to become more familiar with it. So we're going to have to do another it. one of these shows where you're bringing blenders, you're bringing teapots. Yes, right? and yeah, blending with teas. <coughs> you're bringing you're talking side. about... Um, People put it in the <coughs> smoothies. This, mm -hmm. this may be the last thing about caffeine or something that I'd right. like to say, but um, the, the tea is unique, actual tea leaf. Some, I'm not talking about uh, stuff like peppermint or chamomile because that's not actually the, the camellia sinensis, the, the tea bush. Um, but right. tea uh, is interesting. It does have caffeine. It has significantly less than coffee. But it, it has another uh, molecule in there, L-theanine, which creates a, um, scientifically shown to create a relaxing influence. And so um, the, in ancient cultures, the, um, the monks or the people of the temple or something would drink tea specifically for its ability to create alertness, but also um, calmness. And so with both of those things What do we know together, that's like that? <laughs> Mm. Coca Cola? No. <laughs> no. I'll be there. Starts with a T. Starts with a T. It's with an M. Mm. Something like that. No, T. Tea. Mm. <laughs> tea. <laughs> tea. Mm. Got it. Yeah. Tea. Mm. <laughs> yep. Yes, that's the, um, the alpha waves, right? The, that's right. Yes. That's right. Now, yeah. there, are, there, are med <laughs> there are medicinal qualities to music, too, aren't, aren't there, oh, Jonas? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there are qualities. <laughs> I don't know if we call them medicinal. Depends um, on who's playing. Yeah. And Depends on who's medicine. <laughs> Right. What right. medicine is needed? What if now? What right. if Jonas was playing? Well, sure. Yeah, I'd, I'd go there. Okay. Yeah, it <laughs> depends on what what medicine is needed, right, Jonas? Right. So, um, let's so you, first what first medicine do you need? What do you What do you want? First, we need before we take our, our yes. musical medicine. Yes. Here, uh, what What can you go into your history as far as what got you into music, et cetera? What your What your particular? My dad was a professional saxophone and, oh, wow. and clarinetist and singer. Nice. Until he got married, and then my mom said he couldn't be out all night playing music, and he had to get a regular job. What did he end up doing? Tough uh, furniture business. Furniture business. So I don't think he ever recovered from that loss. And he was a he, he he was a terrific saxophone player. I I heard him play many times. Nice. And wow. um, so he really, you know, I 
that's where I think I got my music. Uh, what do you call it? Inclination. Uh, your your influence. Yeah. What about who were you listening to when you were uh, learning? Well, <laughs> who in inspired the, you? Back in the 1800s. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I grew up with all the bebop music and Motown and then the Beatles and, and then the 60s and all of that influenced me. I, nice. I, uh, I, I write, as you know, I write music, and um, I, I, it's kind of it's kind of lyric intensive. Most of my music, I mean, I, I, I. You write your songs around the lyrics mainly. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. Would you, is your creative process? I ask this. By the way, this is one of my couple of the standard questions I ask the pop folks, the pop stars, and all that. But I want to ask you what your creative process is. How does it hit you? Well, or how do you it, use it, it? It comes in various ways, but the best way is when it just pops into my head something and and the, uh, actually the song i was practicing before yeah. we, we uh, went on camera i needed another song for my new cd which came out last november straight from my heart and uh i was four days from being in the studio five days maybe and uh, just desperate for another song and then i woke up with this lyric in my head and it just, and the rest just, boom, you know. It's so, nice. I wish it could happen that way all the time. Mm -hmm. And it would probably happen more often if I was, showed up more and was more present for it to happen, you know what I mean? It's well, like, it's hard to, it's hard, I'm talking, you know, when, you, when you're a, quote, grown-up, when you're an adult, <laughs> whatever that is, um, I, I, I feel like what happens is everything else, all the other things kind of step in, and they take your energy and they take, and they distract you. And it's very hard to stay focused on, like when, when a muse hits you, when, or when a song is hitting, a melody is hitting you, or something like that. I used to be, I remember when I was younger, I used to be like, I used to carry around this ridiculous uh, cassette recorder. And I used to, you know, those bulky things to take it out, and I'd just sing into it whenever the, the stuff hit me, because I didn't want it to go away. Right. And I'd have cassettes and cassettes of like little things here and there, and then also lyrics. If lyrics popped in my head, it's like, I'm never going to remember this, I better record this. We don't really have the we have do have the luxury with cell phones because everybody's ha everybody has a, a voice recorder of some point uh, of some or if they don't you can have an app, but it doesn't seem like the creative process anymore because of texting because of the the kind of culture that we're in. I'm really surprised anybody gets anything done that they're not <laughs> like they need to go to the tea house and settle right. down and like let yeah. these things hit them. Right. Um, how do you how do you fight through that? I mean, you must be aware of the distractions too, right? Uh, yeah, it's it. Uh, uh, Without going into a lot of detail, I, and I'm not saying I'm w walking this walk, but there's a book called The War of Art. I love that book. And I read it, that one. It's a fabulous yeah. book for mm -hmm. artists of it's about any the kind. Time it's come up on the show too. <laughs> and, and really for anybody who wants to accomplish mm -hmm. anything. And his, uh, Stephen Pressfield, the guy who wrote it, he wrote the, um, the screenplay for Bagger Vance. Yeah. Um, he's his, the bottom line is you know you either do the work or you don't, and there's so there's the doing the work and then there's all the excuses. Everything else is an excuse. Right. So either you're doing it or you're making excuses, and it doesn't matter what the excuse is. He talked about putting in his eight hours a day if he if he had pneumonia. All so right. Well, he, that's, that's. But I can attest to I can attest to I'm more creative if I'm walking around the green let's <coughs> say. I have more, I do my, if people are in town, they're going to see me walk around the, the, the square a lot. And it's because I'm, I'm being hit by something and I want it to come out. I want the inspiration to come out, whether it's a song, whether it's a lyric, just a little bit of lyrics or, an, or a concept that I have to work through in a cathartic way that's going to turn into a song. Uh -huh. I need something, and I've heard other people do, have that kind of stimulus. If I'm in my house with my guitar, I almost never have the same kind of vibe, and I don't, I don't think it's because it's not, you know, Stipatia this or, or whatever. They do. It's, it's really because it's just the atmosphere, what's hitting me and what's inspiring me or what's, what's pushing the thing through. So I'm agreeing totally with you have to do the work. So in this case, my, my case, maybe the work is get to the park, yeah, <laughs> you know, do the walk, mm -hmm. uh, do, the, do, yeah. do your work, do the walk. One of the things that, as a matter of fact, one of the things that I find most stimulating is playing with other musicians, and Corey hasn't mentioned that he is a musician, he's a tabla player. Corey? Yeah. Have you been hiding out yeah, and, uh, some info we, from us? We actually yeah. played been, once. Holding out? Been kind of missing in action recently uh, with, you know, putting my attention yeah, on yeah. other things. But, Corey, what's your musical background? Um, I, I have been, well, I, you could say I, well, I started learning tabla, which is uh, 
East Indian um, hand drums um, when I was 15, I think. So almost 10 years ago. Well. Yeah. And I, I had a great experience. I went to India for six months and, and studied with a teacher there and lived with him. And he was the teacher who I started with here in Fairfield. And oh, wow. It was a great, really great time. But, uh, was it one of the... Go ahead, I'm sorry. I bet you can't do this. <laughs> well, I can't do that. I've never had <laughs> anybody right that here. can. It's like a little topper hand. Can you sing to that? Oh, I can sing. No. <laughs> I'd have to work on that one. <laughs> right, right. Let's go walk right. around the, the green. I think, I, like, I, think yeah. I got it. I think I got Already? Corey. Is that right? Corey, Did I, I, get it? I never met anybody, ever. <laughs> Look at this. You, I never, and I always wanted well. to learn the drums. Wow. If I, I feel left out. We'll have to have to take <laughs> lessons from you. Try it. Seriously, I've never uh, met anybody who can do that. Oh, that's, that's We could do nice. a YouTube video with a black background or something. You know, with this well, perhaps stuff. perhaps Jason Strong, <laughs> our co-producer here, he's going like this. <laughs> oh, you can do it. Look at that. He just did it. <laughs> Seriously, I've never met anybody who could do it with that sound. Everyone goes like, very cool. Well, you're doing it really Okay. Well, so that's, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's a weird yeah. transition point, right? Jonas, yeah. this is the point in the show when we play a song really quickly. Oh, really, really. <laughs> we need the, uh, How much time do you, do you have? Much uh, we have? We have some time. Uh, uh, can you play that quickly. song that you were rehearsing earlier? Sure, of course. And then of we'll course. come back to the <laughs> thing. Uh, there, there's another oh, song that's my favorite song that, I, <laughs> that, um, that wasn't a song. Okay, but whatever you want. What do you play? What you I no, think no, no. You play, play with favorites. You play. That's right. Sure. Okay, this is a. Oh, song. and you got it before the end of the show. You got to play the song for your son. That's it. That Beautiful. Was song. Play. Let's see. No, that's not. That's not how that one goes. Goes. Some were born to be great heroes, born to wear the crown of fame, to be forever honored by the tales that bear their names. Though fame may not await you or a place in history, you will always have a place, son. Deep inside this heart of me They say a father's done his duty When his son can stand alone When he's ready for a family When he calls the world his own I'm not sure how long that road is or what future years may bring but together we'll keep trying son until you've taken we and son when my time is over and i've gone to where i'll be they will ask me where my heart is for they'll see it's not with me And I'll say I've left it with you Where forever it will stay To surround you with my love, son And help you find your way And though I may not live forever In this body that you know I promise you forever, son Wherever you may go In your very darkest hour When your skies seem cold with rain 
that my love will shine upon you and help you smile again. And son, when my time is over and I've gone to where I'll be, they will ask me where my heart is, for they'll see it's not with me. And I'll say I've left it with you, where forever it will stay, to surround you with my love, son, and help you find your way. And son, when my time is over, and I've gone to where I'll be, they will ask me where my heart is, for they'll see it's not with me. And I'll say I've left it with you, where forever it will stay, to surround you with my love, son, and help you find your way, to surround you with my love, my son, and help you find Wow. Oh, great. Make me cry on my show. Thank you very much. That's, <laughs> That's beautiful. beautiful. Oh, my God. I love the gaps that you use. The pause, they're so powerful. It's pauses in between, you know? The... Yeah. Yeah. Pregnant pause. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. That's beautiful. Nice guitar too, by the way. Beautiful yeah. guitar. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Mike, thanks for loaning it. <laughs> thanks for playing it. I it's love beautiful. my guitar. It, it's in the shop. That's why it's not here. Too. Yeah. It's beautiful. The song is beautiful. Thank yeah, you very much for yours. playing that. That's incredible. That Thank you. Um, I'm totally destroyed now, so I'm not sure where, <laughs> where the show is going. But um, would you mind? You feel like playing another song? Can we get one more from you? Sure. Yeah. Sure, I'll do the song we were talking about earlier. Okay. This is the song, this is the one I mentioned that came to me, you know, just a few days. Nice. And the lyric that came to mind was, I woke up with a lyric and it was, uh, when nothing's right, when it all goes wrong, just turn on your stereo and turn up this song. Right. right. So that was, right. Yeah, that's how this song came to me. So. This one won't make me cry, it's good. It's a little more upbeat. <laughs>
feelings right When it all goes wrong Just turn on your stereo Turn up this song oh, oh, May it give you strength To feel your pain To keep on dancing In the pouring watching on the internet. Um, I, uh, I I guess we have to wrap things up. I would love another song. But I guess we have to wrap things up. Um, Jonas, you mentioned before you have CDs. Yes. Uh, where can one find such CDs? At my website, uh, www.jonasmagrammusic.com. Beautiful. Thank you for asking. Oh, yeah. And, uh, Corey, one M more time. M-A-G-R-A-M. Thank you, Corey. Okay. There you go. Okay. And Corey, one more time as far as if somebody's interested in your tees or, or if they want to go online and check you out, where would they check it out? Sure. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook as well. You can just search for Earth and Water Tea Lounge and Pottery Shop. We have a page there. Or you can go to uh, www.earthwatertea.com. And when are you opening? Uh, we had our sneak preview event last Friday, a week from uh, today, a week ago, and it went really, really well. We had a Probably a couple hundred people come in there. And then, um, oh, beautiful. That was the art walk, right? Yeah, yeah during yeah. the art walk. What was the also. what was the uh, what were the comments? Oh, I'll just invite people to come see for themselves. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't like. You know, when you go to a movie and pe somebody's hyped it up too hard for you, mm -hmm. and then like you're like, I don't really know what they were talking about. But um, just except for the Avengers, you couldn't hype that one up enough. That was an incredible movie. But I digress. Oh, an incredible movie! Oh my yeah. God! You should. Everybody should go see that movie. It's yeah, really that was what. Just we're, we're on the Avengers right now. <laughs> the Avengers. Uh, I, let me tell you something. Oh, and Jason Strong is liking the Avengers. Thank you, Jason. <laughs> I can go again. You know, if you want to go, I'll go again. Okay. Um, the Avengers. This was one. The one movie where it was like an ensemble movie, but every time somebody had their scene, it was their movie. I've never seen a movie like that. That's I can't great. think of one movie, and I and I, th I guess this kind of an ensemble you'd never seen before, except in things like you know Ocean's Eleven and things like that. But the way that they did this ensemble, when it's when Tony Stark, when Iron Man is on screen on camera, it's his movie, mm -hmm. right? With him with Pepper Potts and the and the whole, uh, and whenever the, the Hulk was on, it was like it was Hulk's moment. The Thor, you know, it was just, yeah, it was great, unbelievable, it's a lot of fun. Anyways, okay, yeah. <laughs> And uh, the nutrition mission. Yes, it's just up and coming. So hang on, everyone. It's, but, but it's the, building. Okay, but the uh, the internet's uh, the address is what? Nutrition mission. Okay, any -E right. Yes. Dot com. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nutrition mission. Yeah. Dot com. And nutrition is both N E W nutrition. New right. nutrition. Yes. N E W T R I. This is kind of a new yeah, system. What? New yeah. system. Oh, wow. so new new, new foods that are that are not ancient. new, yeah. but right. new but to nutrition. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. Excellent. Revival. And, I, mm -hmm. great. And, and I'm inviting everyone back to have another. Let's yes. let's do this again because you That's guys are great. so incredibly talented and you're you're representing such wonderful missions <laughs> and bodies of work. Um, and a new and this great new concept for Fairfield. I think that that's yeah. really cool. I wish you all incredible luck with your projects. Thank Seriously, you. thank you. And I want and and I, <laughs> I, 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 you know, as much as I hate to say it, but um, I like the songs that make me cry by Jonas. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you're, you're really, I do too. Uh, you're really good with uh, you're good with your lyrics, and they're they're just upfront and honest. And a lot of people, um, I think. Would yeah. would benefit from hearing how you put your put your songs together and hearing your CDs, etc. Yeah, a lot of heart. Good job. All right, so thank here you. we are. Thank you guys very you very were much. Great. That was fun. Yeah. Thank you. thank you. All right, so that's it for Fairfield 2.0. Um, right, Jason? Right. Okay. <laughs> that's it for Fairfield 2.0, and uh, come back next time for another exciting adventure. Who knows who'll be on next time? Perhaps it'll be you.
<laughs> oh, and I want to say hi. Just joking. <laughs> <laughs> hi, mom. <laughs>